Hey, horror fans. It's time to take a look at a sultry little sensation from 1986. And what could be sweeter than the devil's honey? Everything I love is in you. I need you. I need all of you. No. Because you don't want me. You want a piece of me. Hey horror fans, welcome back to J vs. Horror. And this week we're talking about a film that's a first time watch for me. It's from 1986, it's called The Devil's Honey. And it was directed by Lucio Fulci, which surprised me because I thought I had seen all of Fulci's films. But I had not seen this one, so uh, when I did find out about it, I decided to go ahead and take a dive into The Devil's Honey. Uh... It's also called Dangerous Obsession. I believe that's what it was released as in the United States. And it's a 1986 Italian erotic drama. Uh, of course, directed by the great Lucio Fulci. Now, this film, guys, I have not seen one this weird in a while. I won't say I've never seen one this weird, but I haven't seen one this strange in quite a while. Um, it's not really a horror film. It is... To an extent, I guess erotic drama is the best way to explain it, but it kind of played like a thriller to me that, that had a little more of a point to it than your usual sex thriller. Uh, so just, I'm going to give you guys the plot here, and uh, we'll go from there. So we have Johnny and Jessica, and these two young lovers who are in the throes of passion. And uh, Johnny is a mu musician, and he's obsessed with having sex and taking sex further and further. And uh, he uh, takes his girlfriend along with him on this journey. Uh, he kind of is always able to charm Jessica into doing what he wants her to do. And the film opens at a recording studio where Johnny, after taking a break playing a saxophone, he calls Jessica into the booth and he starts to fondle her uh, while the other techs are kind of watching what's going on. And so there's an interesting scene here, guys, that I have never seen in a film. Uh, I'm not sure if this is possible or not. But uh, Johnny uh, puts his saxophone between Jessica's legs and uh, starts to play. And so the end where the music comes out, he's got that between her legs. And uh, it, it brings her to orgasm. Uh, it's just interesting. And it's done in a sleazy way, but it was also something I'd never seen before. Uh, and it just, I don't know, it, you know, like, I'm not big on sleazy films. Sometimes I feel like there's too much sleaze in some of these 70s films, some of these, uh, giallo films. This is not a giallo, uh, per se, but some of the giallo films and stuff like that, I always felt like there was a little too much sleaze in them. It kind of takes away from some of the storytelling, but I actually got to say I enjoyed this and not just because it was sexual or whatever, but it's just something I'd never seen before. And uh, it was, it's always interesting when you've seen 5,000 movies to uh, watch a scene that you've never seen in something before. And so meanwhile, on the other side of town, we have this doctor named Wendell Simpson, played by uh, Brett Halsey. And he's a surgeon who's having some problems with his wife, and they never seem to uh, get along. They're not having sex anymore. And... He's a workaholic. He's obsessed with his work at the hospital. So his wife's name is Carol. And she's recently discovered that the doctor is making visits to prostitutes during his work. Uh, you know, like lunch breaks and stuff. And then after work. And uh, he visits a call girl. There's a scene where he visits a call girl. And, you know, he fondles her a little bit. And they have quick sex. But it's not very satisfying. And he kind of forces her to leave. Uh, after paying her, but you get the sense that, you know, it's not just about him not connecting with his wife. He kind of seems despondent and disconnected from all of humanity. Um, he's just so into his work that that's all he can think about, and nothing seems to excite him. Um, so then we go to the next day, and then 
we see Johnny and Jessica, and they're uh, they're playing some games on. You know, he's fondling her while they're on his motorcycle, and afterwards they get to her house, and Johnny's fooling around on the motorcycle, and he falls off and hits his head on a rock. And um, at first, he he seems like he's okay, but later in the recording studio, he passes out and uh, goes into a coma. And we find out that he has a subdural hematoma, uh, which is no joke. So that evening, the doctor's wife, we see her. Uh, they're fighting again, and she's demanding a, revo- a divorce. And then he gets called to the hospital because of Johnny. Uh, he needs to perform major emergency brain surgery to you know, let the swelling off Johnny's head. And uh, this is one part in the film that doesn't make a lot of sense because we see his wife go to the hospital with him and she's, you know, aggravating him about the divorce while he's, you know, going to do this operation. And it's it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, But during the operation, the doctor's mind wonders and he doesn't, you know, do his job probably to the best of his ability. And Johnny dies on the operating table now. Then we see the doctor driving away from the hospital, and we see the grief-stricken Jessica uh, swearing revenge on him. She's going to get him for not, you know, I, I you don't, I don't exactly know how she knew everything that was going on, but she's just really upset with the fact that she doesn't think he did the best job he could do. So she starts sending threatening notes to the doctor, and she starts making harassing phone calls to his office and at his golf club. Uh, we see that him and his wife are playing golf, and they're kind of talking about maybe giving it one last chance, trying to patch up their marriage. And so then she entices the doctor to go to bed with her. And as they start to, you know, things start to happen for them, uh, the the telephone starts ringing, and it rings like ten times, maybe more. And finally the doctor, you know, after all this ringing, he's like, it's got to be an emergency. So he gets up to answer it. And uh, when he gets up to answer it, the person is hung up. The wife is pissed now. She's, you know, acting like it's the end of the world because he got up to answer the phone when he's a brain surgeon. And so she gets up, she gets dressed, and she walks out, says she's never coming back. And then the phone rings again, and we hear Jessica ask him, Why did you let him die? And Jessica becomes more and more deranged with grief. So it, it does play like a thriller here, especially in the beginning. And uh, she spends time watching these home videos of Johnny. And the next day, she goes out and decides to uh, put her plan into action. She pulls a gun on the doctor and she gets him into his car. And uh, she forces him to drive her to her house. Uh, Once they're there, she chloroforms him and ties him up. Once the doctor regains consciousness, he finds a dog barking furiously just inches away from his face. And outside, Jessica's smashing his car with an axe. And then she tells him, you know, she lets him know that she intends to kill him. But only when she's ready. She then sets about humiliating him by forcing him to eat dog food and having him lick her abdomen, which is smeared with his own blood from a wound she inflicted on him. Uh, But the doctor starts to find himself strangely attracted to this. And so Jessica's sadistic games go further... And finally, she forces the doctor at gunpoint uh, down to the beach outside the house. And she's dragging him around on a leash. And uh, she tells him she's going to drown him. And, you know, she's doing this just to instill fear in him. But she almost does drown him. She's got him under the water um, where the surf is coming in, where the tide is coming in. And uh, then she kind of changes her mind and she pulls him back out and tries to revive him. And so then we get to see some... We get some context here about Jessica and Johnny's relationship that we didn't have in the beginning uh, through a series of flashbacks. Uh, Jessica show, memories show us that Johnny had become very cruel in his excesses when it came to sexuality. Uh, she'd had a baby, or she was she'd been carrying a baby from their. Uh, affair and then she miscarried the baby uh and that was kind of johnny's fault in a way and um and then we see her in the present again and her dog dies and she buries the dog on the beach and now she's getting to a point where she is now uh 
I think she's gone beyond rage. She's reached. A, she's gone into that point where she is also despondent, and she doesn't really care about anything. And uh, so she plays a few more games with the doctor, and he listens to her talk and tell him about her life with Johnny. And she kind of like while this is going on, she realizes that she didn't really love him that much, and he never really loved her at all. And she was just kind of like a sex toy for him, just something he would use and put back on a shelf when he was done. And she has this memory that she recalls several months earlier during a vacation uh, in Venice. Johnny bought her this expensive bracelet to symbolize his love for her. And she thought that that was just the greatest thing that anyone had ever done. But then that night they went to the movies with one of his friends and <laughs> a musical associate of his. And during the movie, uh, she's they're making out, they're they're kissing. But then she looks down and realizes that he's uh, letting this other person go down on him uh, while he's kissing her. And so this is kind of like the final straw for her. It kind of makes her realize that maybe he never really cared about her at all. And she sees that he was just a mean, self-destructive person. And. Uh, she goes out to the ocean and she throws the bracelet in the ocean. And she returns to the house and she unties the doctor and tells him that he's free to go. And she's just totally out of it at this point, you know. She goes upstairs to the bedroom. She takes off all of her clothes. She lays down on the bed. And she puts a pistol to her head. She's going to kill herself. And seconds later, and I am giving away the end here, guys, because there's no twist ending to it. It's just, and it's an older film. I would say if you don't want to hear the end of it, stop now, you know. Spoiler alert, I guess, is the best thing to say. But, uh, yeah, she uh, she goes up there with the intention of killing herself. And later she is surprised to see that the doctor, Simpson, walks uh, into her bedroom. And he stops her from committing suicide. And then they have sex. And so it almost seems like now they're drawn into some kind of weird relationship with each other. And the film kind of ends that way. I think uh, the doctor is laying there next to her and he recites this poem that he had recited earlier in the film uh, but that's pretty much the end so there was no there's no big climactic ending I think uh, all the climax stuff is earlier in the film where you're kind of seeing how far she's willing to take her grief with this doctor that she's captured oh man um, this film is weird guys and I'm not gonna I'm not saying it in a bad way it's odd because you know describing it and just you know going back through it again it does sound very odd it, it sounds like something that i personally would not be a fan of but i think there's more weight to this movie than what it sounds like it sounds like it's a very sleazy italian film which i guess you could look at it that way i've seen a ton of those too um but it, it really has more to it than that it, it's got some you know thoughts on uh, Stockholm Syndrome, and it may be that, you know, Jessica was a bit of a prisoner herself, even if she didn't realize it. She was kind of a prisoner of a relationship uh, that had gone awry without her realizing it. And a very beautiful uh, woman, too, here. Uh, Blanca Marsalic, I think I'm saying that right, uh, plays Jessica. Very beautiful woman. And, of course, Brett Halsey as Dr. Wendell Simpson, and uh, he's been in quite a few things uh even the soap opera young and the restless but uh yeah all in all the devil's honey from 1986 lucio fulci i'm gonna give this one guys i'm gonna give it seven out of ten i almost want to go a little bit higher but it's just it's so um it's really cheap as as a film you know the way it's made and everything and uh some of the cuts in it are weird like the editing stuff and so I think that, I mean, I'm a big Fulci fan, but we all know that there's a point in Fulci's career that he got to where he was not uh, going full throttle at his films anymore. And there was several films he even kind of like stepped back on while he was directing them and let other people come in and direct the rest of the film. Uh, so this was around that period or right before that period. I mean, you get to like 1990, I think, is uh, around the time you're going to see the last decent film from Fulci. And, um, but yeah, I like this one. I'd give it 7 out of 10. I'm going to recommend it, but I'm going to recommend it with a warning. It's not for everyone. And it's not something that most people are even going to want to watch for longer than 20 minutes. 
But if you're like me and the first scene draws you in like it did for me, and not out of sexuality or perversion or anything like that, just because it's something that you've never seen before, and when you see that, you wonder where the rest of the film is going. Because you could kind of tell early on that Johnny's not a nice guy and that Jessica is just kind of like following along in this relationship. And even though the beginning where they have this sexual encounter in the recording studio is not... I wouldn't say it's you know overly aggressive or rape or anything like that. You can see that it's not really something that she wanted to do. And uh, she probably also did... You get the feeling that she didn't want this to be seen by other people and he did, you know. So... I think there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. You just have to dig around for it and uh, watch it unfold, guys. Yeah, The Devil's Honey from 1986, giving it a solid 7 out of 10. Go check it out if you like Italian horror films, if you like uh, erotic dramas, if you like uh, Lucio Fulci. I think you'll like this film. Just like I said, guys, be warned. The sleaze level in this is heavy. Uh, But I don't even know if you can call it sleaze. I'd say there's perversity and there's nudity and there's things like that. But they're done on a scale where you kind of get more out of it than just the usual, oh, well, she's naked now. She's going to, you know, a lot of these films, you just see the naked girls walking around and they're going into a shower or they're doing this or they're doing that. And they're getting ready to be killed is what they're actually doing, right? Uh, But not in this. That's not what this movie is about. And uh, a lot of great stuff in here, guys. Check it out. And that's all we got for this week, guys. Check us out next time. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And we'll talk to you. The next time we got something worth talking about. Bye.